Hi, um, back to the training for individuals. You filled out all the beginning fields on data collection and you started to fill out your project name and program focus branching section. So in this section, um, I started as an example saying concerts for, for piano and vocal youth, but really it's a concert for my piano and, uh, and singing, Spanish singing youth. So you might start to adjust that based on what you've written in the next box. Like I said, you click the individual artist um, area to pop open the next group. And you can always shrink and grow each of the sections by clicking the gray bar and that moves it in and out so you can see different sections. In here, you're going to click the applicant checklist after reading the, a little bit more about the different programs that you are a resident for at least one year, that you won't use the funds for tuition, that you're not paying debts occurred before the grant period, and that you'll use the funds, you won't use the funds for religious socialization of the participants. Then you put in your, your artistic um, discipline here. You can just say the word music in my case, or you can say piano and vocals. And then you're gonna, going to write a much longer proposal description about what really will occur within your specifically what you're wanting to use the funding for. The level of request is important to keep in mind. So if you're going for the, the larger artist um, project grant for $5,000, then you're, you're going to have to have quite a bit in this spot that relates to what you're going to do throughout the whole course of the year related to your long project. And only artists who um, somewhat make a living or make their primary living from their arts farm are eligible here for $5,000. No um, hobby artists or artists that are just starting to work in the discipline that and the medium that they're, they're hoping to receive funding. So you'll write your, your narrative into that box, which should complement your budget area. So in the budget box, You'll put in a basic budget or upload a file. We like to encourage you to use the budget box if at all possible. So you might, for the $5,000 grant, say that you have um, room rental of a certain amount, for instance. You might have mileage, um, which you'll say your, your, your amount of mileage times the rate that you're using and then put the math in there. You might have um, different ways of paying people that are involved in your grant. Um, and then you might have the, uh, so some artist fees for yourself, possibly those are eligible um, and uh, some specialists, some contracted artist fees. So those might be involved in a like a videographer, for instance, or um, someone who's recording, someone who's playing the piano for your activity. Um, there might be an editor involved in a writing activity. There's lots and lots of examples of eligible expenses. You might have some equipment that you're hoping to purchase. So that equipment should be specified. So let's say that your equipment is a, a kiln that you're hoping to order then you'll have researched that amount with two quotes if it's a more expensive item over $250 per item. And you'll have a, an amount of money here that relates to that quote that's attached that you're hoping to, to um, have that be the one that you're going to actually order with the grant as an example. If you have extra um, money that you're going to need exceeding the grant, you can say that you're going to use your own funds. So you can put your own funds in here, or if you have another way, way of raising money, you might say that um, tickets will be charged, tickets, um, ticket revenue, or a donation.
Um, those are some examples of what might be in that box. Your past accomplishments, um, you'll want to write a clear list of your accomplishments for the last two years in that arts medium that you're applying. I like to say that it's kind of a little more of a list than a true long paragraph write up. And then you might, um, if you're applying for the $5,000 grant, you'll want to put together a, a typical artist resume and either copy and paste it into this box or upload the file. Your work sample description is next with the work sample itself. You can upload a file of your work sample. You can connect people with your work sample online and tell them exactly where to look and to find your work sample. The description needs to be the, um, the size of the piece of its visual art, the medium of the piece, the materials in it, the date it was created. So we're looking for really specific information on um, five to 10 work sample pieces. The um, definition of what to put for a work sample is in the guidelines. Letter of recommendation is for the $5,000 grant. You can upload a file or have them send that to our office. A lot of times the letters of recommendation just come directly into my inbox. And it gives an example of how to, to do that here. In-kind and people projections, you'll have some volunteer time that you maybe put towards your project that isn't being paid by the grant. Um, you might have donations of, of space. Uh, if somebody normally would charge rent and they're saying you can use the space rent free or another thing that would normally have cash switch hands, you might in this case um, be able to put it into the in-kind donation if you're not having to pay for that. Your art estimate relates to yourself, one, plus any other artists working with you or adult participants in your project. Your youth number has to do with the um, number of youngsters either in the audience or participating directly in your project with you. And the adult is the adult audience that's required to see what you have um, done with your project. So a, a normal example would be that you might have a number like three for artists, yourself and two others. Youth might be about 20 youth if they're not your primary purpose um, with showcasing at the end of your endeavor and your adult estimate could be around 75. So you're thinking that about 100 people will have exposure to what you're doing with the art by the end. If you're doing social media or radio broadcast, you can guess that the adult um, broadcast uh, audience that would relate to seeing your project or hearing about your project. Your start date needs to be um, after the, the grant is awarded. So most of the time that's the beginning of the, the next calendar year and the end date is the end of the next calendar year. So right um, now in 2022, you would put January 1 of 2023 to December 31st of 2023. The venue anticipated is required by individual grants so that you can say where you will showcase what you did with your grant to the general public. So you can put your um, both your own studio and the place that will showcase it into the public. You'll create a quick uh, goal and evaluation. So you can read the list here and select what relates the best to um, your program goal selection. And then you'll do your achievable goal. So individuals describe your career goals as an artist and then relate them to the main goal of your proposed project. So I can give you a few examples if you give me a call on that if you're, if you're hung up. And then you'll want to do how you're going to evaluate that. So if your career goal is to have um, those three concerts, like I mentioned with my example, then my main goal of my proposed project is those successful concerts that will have um, people feeling that they had a high quality experience. And I might have some people related goals of making sure that I have 10 youth and 50 adults at the concerts. And then my career goal as an artist would be that um, this advancement will move along my career for public exposure of my own art form and my uh, piano music. 
So then I would evaluate that through a questionnaire, perhaps of the audience members, asking them um, maybe through or through voting to raise their hands related to whether they've been at something like this before and if they view this as high quality and get some feedback through audience participation. Then you'll want to fill out the needs assessment section of the of the application with just what you would like to see from our office based on what you see as a need. And then going on to put your supporting uh, resume here into the supporting documents if you need to, to put that in. If you have any quotes for equipment, there's a spot to put that into this area and other supporting material uploads. And then you will sign off as the authorizing official and the project director since you're an individual. And then you will hit the submit button at the bottom, the blue button. And if you hit the submit button and there's items that you haven't finished, they will pop up. I'll show you in red that all of these items I didn't do as I went through the grant application. So you, you need to go back through by scrolling up and finding those red boxed areas and making sure that you put in that information before you're able to actually submit the grant. So I hope that that was, that was helpful um, and that you'll be able to move forward with um, your application. Please give us a call or email if you have more questions, which I'm sure you will. Remember that we also have a grant writing station, so you can come to Warren to sit at our grant writing station and complete your grant here in our office space with um, myself close by to help. We have a work sample creation area related to taking pictures of your artwork that you would bring in so you can put the work sample into your grant. And we have an audio recording studio too that's available. Thank you.